anybody has not lived in the Middle East like me. I lived in Israel. I lived in Egypt. I lived in Jordan, and I know exactly the truth about what's going on over there. People need to shut their mouth. Well, what is they the truth? What, the what right, is the truth, Melissa? They don't have the right to protest unless they lived in those countries or have a direct relation to what's going on. But Danny in Rickmansworth. Danny, hello. Hi there. Thanks for having me on. Pleasure. Far well, away. I, well, I just want to say that I don't think there should be a ceasefire at all. Uh, at whatever the cost, morally, I'm justified in my mind at least, as tragic as it is, that, um, and it is tragic that women and children are being killed, etc., etc. I mean, reportedly 7,000 people now, I was reading, is, is the yeah. r reported death toll in Gaza. Yes, and, I don't, know, I don't think course, that's the total. And, and of course, even if it was double that, mm. if Israel was intentionally killing these people, then it would be 100 times that. So we know it's, there's no intentional targeting. That's a ridiculous thing that people come up with sometimes. No, but they would know there's collateral damage, to be fair. Yes, yeah, they would, and, and that's a terrible and phrase when you talk about people's lives. Of but course. They would, in but military also, terms, they would know that. True, and in military terms, in terms of collateral damage, you know, I haven't been able to find the actual figures, but I'm convinced that during the attack on ISIS over Iraq and Syria, and indeed in Afghanistan, You'll find that the number, I'm sure, I haven't got them on hand, mm. so I can't be 100% sure, are significantly greater in terms of civilian deaths. And no one asked for humanitarian corridors for those women and children being sort of carpet bombed by, by the British and the Americans and maybe the French as well over you know, less than 10 years ago. So, I, so it's all kind of... So obvious. hold firm, I think, is your message, isn't it, Danny? Yes, it is. It okay. is. Very, uh, well. very well delivered. Thank you very much indeed for that, Danny. Thank you for your call. Keep them coming. 0344 four double nine one thousand. Just before I go back to Benedict, let's take Peter in Leeds. Peter, hello. Hello. Uh, good afternoon. How are you? Uh, very well. Good to hear from you, Peter. Uh, the, 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 the airways are yours. Right. Thank you, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm inclined to agree that a ceasefire it would be very, very difficult. Uh, now, if you were talking about, um, we'll say, make a comparison with uh, w w with Ukraine and uh, and Russia, I think you would be asking Mr. Putin to to start this ceasefire because he started the war. And I would say um, that, that whoever started the war is the one who who should end the war. You know, and um, uh, uh, Hamas means violence. That's the meaning of the word. They are an organisation which can chop off babies' heads, mm. you know, burn them alive. Horrific things, you know. And I think, all in all, ju ju just looking at the whole situation, when, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm 77 now. I was two years old when the State of Israel was formed. Um and uh, I remember within hours, within hours of them entering into the land of Israel or Palestine, whatever you want to call it. There was it. war, yes. Uh, there there were was. Seven Arab nations attacked them. In yep. other words, you know, they were saying right from the word go. Well, they wanted to get rid of Israel, period. It was it was absolutely, uh, your history is spot on there. Listen, Peter, I'm going to get take it take it over to uh, Benedict, but thank you for your call and keep them coming. 0344 499 1000. I'll try and take some more calls after the break. I mean, just going back to our first call there, mm. um, th where the, the argument was, uh, look, no, no to a... Uh, a ceasefire, and that, I think that's pretty much what everyone is saying uh, yeah. that I've heard. What about these pauses people are talking about? Pauses um, to get humanitarian aid. What's a, the difference? A, again, though, a pause, Israel will say, is an opportunity for Hamas to regroup. And they will also point out, rightly, that actually a lot of the humanitarian aid is just taken by Hamas. Like if it's fuel. fuel, they just take it because they need it to work the generators, to work uh, the air systems into their tunnels. That's why there isn't any fuel in Gaza. It's not like there has been no fuel all of this time. It's because Hamas has been stockpiling it because it's known at some point it is going to have to 
use it when it goes to war with Israel. Actually, it monopolizes a lot of the food and water for its own fighters below ground. This is something that has to be understood. The Palestinian people are not suffering purely because Israel is not very nice to them. They are also suffering because their leadership repeatedly has failed them in the West Bank and pure out exploits them in Gaza. But that is why I think it's been commonly accepted the Palestinian, there's a huge distinction mm. between Palestinians and Hamas, isn't there? And I think Hamas is a, very popular in Gaza. Let's not get away from Well, now, that. you are the first person who's told me that. It you is. See, most people <laughs> will come on here and say, actually, Palestinians do not like Hamas. In the West Bank, they don't. In the West Bank, they don't. But in Gaza, it was democratically elected. Oh, yeah, but that was and a while it remains, ago. It was, but that, it remains very popular. But, it controls... But years the, after Hamas has basically it controls, ruined their lives... It controls everything. It controls the, the authorities. But that's so a reason about, to loathe them, isn't not it? Not necessarily. Do, you, do, do people sort of turn against their government? Well, I was pretty furious just... when they controlled our lives here and during COVID, but that is a poor comparison. <laughs> I mean, okay. you were, but actually a lot of people <laughs> no, were not. A right. lot of people yeah. were perfectly happy to go along with it. And actually, mm. when you go through just about every I, despotic I, regime, I, I a lot of people go along with it. It's a terrible comparison, <laughs> and, 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 and it's got no comparison yeah. whatsoever on that score. So I, let me press you on that, though. Mm. You made that statement, mm. and I should have pressed people who made the complete difference. Like, what's the evidence for that? I think? think the evidence can be seen by the fact that actually there hasn't been any major attempt to get rid of Hamas right now. Mm. If it were that, if, if things are that bad, people do stage uprisings. We saw this in Iran earlier mm. this year and last year. We've seen it elsewhere. When governments are despotic, um, a, a, a against their own people, and the people do you not get agree. These moments you of do rebellion. get uprising, and it's very hard. Even you know, the only place where they've got sort of complete blanket control of the media is North Korea. That's the only place where you couldn't really say what goes on there. Most other countries, you do get the uprisings. If there is an uprising in Kazakhstan, which there was last year, you hear about it. Mm. If there is an uprising in Iran, you hear about it. If there is an uprising in Georgia, you hear about it. It's impossible to suppress these things well, in the age of social media. That uh, hasn't happened in Gaza. Fascinating, Benedict. Thank you. Very very much indeed. Let's go to uh, Abdul in Liverpool. Abdul, hello, thanks for your call. Uh, hi, hi, hello, Nick. Hello. Um, you go ahead, it's, uh, it's all yours. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, Nick, I was, I, was talking, uh, I was talking before to Peter, um, so I told him um, I was, it was regarding Hamas and the rally I attended not long ago. Um, so wait, wait, just, just to be clear, which rally were you attending? Pro-Palestinian rally. Well, in the last week or so? Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's okay. right, that's okay. right, because I am pro-Palestine, always have been, always yep. will be. Um, there, were, there were some alarming chance support for Hamas and, you know... So uh, you heard them? Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, alluding to that it's great genocide, you know, what Mohammed did to, to the Jews back in the days, it's alluding to what happened in 7th October and all of that. But um, I'm just wondering, those who support Hamas, because uh, there are there is a huge number of Muslims who support Hamas. Because I follow them, I follow them on on Facebook, social media, uh, Arabs. I follow them because I used to be a Muslim myself. I'm former Muslim, I've been a Muslim. I'm a former Muslim now for like four years. But anyway, I wonder how they feel when Hamas, who they support, how how what they did in the year 2006 to 2007, when they went on a killing spree, killing Palestinians who belonged to the Fatah movement. They shot them dead, they threw them off the rooftop. I remember this, I was 16, I remember mm. it like mm. it was yesterday. Mm. And also, Hamas being sponsored by Iran, the Iranian regime, you know, the same Iranian regime that, that helped Bashar Assad. Why are people blind to this? More than a quarter of a million, more than a quarter of a million Syrians in the Syrian civil war. It's the same Iranian regime that, that created the turmoil, the civil war in Yemen. The, you know, the head of the snake in the region is Iran. I don't know these baloney Muslims how they could support Hamas. Why? Well, uh, Abdul, that, I mean, you you ask a, uh, Abdul, you ask a really good question. You've you've painted uh, you know a really grim picture there. It, 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 what is it that makes such blind support uh, drive people to the streets to celebrate effectively, based on what you've said, the the the, the attack uh, on Israel on October the seventh, blind to the failings of Hamas? Because we had. You would have thought those actions would have turned the ordinary Palestinian against this terror group, but you don't think they have. Yeah, 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 they, they, they haven't. I mean, yeah, I mean, as you know, Nick, they're not only Hamas are not only driven uh, politically. You know, they're driven religiously as well. You know, they're also waiting for a fairy tale to unfold. 
you, many people don't know this about Hamas. A lot of Muslims, they believe Go on. right now, they, they, they are excited. They're believing they're, they believe they're living in prophetic time. All this has been prophesied by Muhammad, um, what's going on. So they believe now it's just a matter of time until Al Mahdi shows up. Al Mahdi, he's like a copycat version of the Messiah, the Jewish Messiah, a savior. So as, as the Jews believe there'll be a savior for them, so do Muslims. Okay. So they no. believe right now, you have an alarming hadith where Muhammad told his men, he said to them that the, the, the last day will not, will not be established. The last day, that's like day of judgment, or there's a okay. Tuesday, Muslim will be L involved. Listen, listen, I, I, I've got one, um, Abdul, sorry, fight. Abdul, I just, Abdul, I've got to interrupt you because I want to ask you a very quick question and I need a very quick answer, okay? Do you think there should be a ceasefire now or not? Well, obviously, there is. You do, you, you, you do, even though it might benefit oh. Hamas. I think, I, no, no, I, I think it will hinder Hamas. Okay. Okay. Abdul, that's that's great. I'm I'm sorry to to cut you off there, but it's been a great call. I'm only doing that so I can quickly go to Melissa in London. Hello, Melissa. Hello. Hi, Melissa. Just got time for your call before the break, so thank you for calling. Yeah. Thanks for accepting my call. Go ahead. Yes, I, I just want to say I'm in absolute disgust about what's going on in London since this war has gone on I just say for the normal life of Londoners is completely disrupted by this massive massive protest the mm. second point I want to say is if you if anybody has not lived in the Middle East like me I lived in Israel I lived in Egypt I lived in Jordan and I know exactly the truth about what's going on over there people need to shut their mouth well what is they the truth what, the what right. is the truth Melissa they don't have the right to protest unless they lived in those countries or have a direct relation to what's going on. But that, that, that is, look, I understand why you'd want to say that. You'd want people to be more informed, but we, that's not a reason to ban a march, however awful uh, it, it impacts on you and, and you feel that sentiment. It's just not a reason to ban it, is it? I believe in free speech. It's very important. But, but I not to ban a march. You don't. I, I do not believe in glorifying terrorism. The streets of Agreed. London are filled with jihadi terrorists. The Hamas. But is not all those people, surely. Organization geared to kill anybody that's not like them. What do people wake up? Wake up. Hamas is a terrorist organization. The Arabs, the Muslims, and the Muslim countries fight against Hamas. So, what in the world is the West thinking to allow people to carry? Hamas flag well, they should be arrested. In this country, uh, Melissa, they should be arrested. I think the whole point is people are saying the police are not arresting them. So why? So well, ask the mayor, ask the, the government, the decon, uh, the decon. What well, is the decon doing? What is he doing to protect a normal citizen? A legitimate question. Absolutely what a legitimate is question. What is the prime minister doing? Why are they allowing 300,000 people to march because with, with because politician flag. Melissa, I will answer you. I, I will give you an answer if you give me a second. I, I suspect the reason you would get if you asked the Prime Minister and even Mayor Khan would be politicians don't direct who to arrest, but they do ask the police to enforce the law. So this is actually a question for the police because we know the Home Secretary has insisted on it. I don't know what Mayor Khan's position is on it, frankly.